New Jersey State Senate panel has unanimously endorsed the pass the trash bill. Soon, teachers marked as sexual predators will not be able to just slightly skip from school to school. The new law is aimed at stopping the vicious cycle of teachers who resign over sexual abuse allegations and then resurface somewhere else under the radar. It will require both public and private schools to report whether any fired teachers have been accused of sexual misconduct. They also won't be able to destroy, get rid of, or withhold any information on investigations into those teachers. Patricia Teffenhart is the executive director for the New Jersey Coalition Against Sexual Assault. She joins me now. Um, I'm kind of stunned that this needs to be done, Patricia. Yeah, welcome to everybody else's reality, Carol. We, uh, we're pretty amazed at the statistics we found, but we're also really pleased at how quickly this bill is gaining bipartisan support and you know, hoping that we can join the ranks of six other states that have passed similar legislation across the country and hopefully set the stage for more, more states to follow. Oh, you've got to be kidding. This happens in other states besides New Jersey. If you're accused of sexual abuse as a teacher, you can just go get a job at another school district in the same state? Yeah, either in the same state or in another state. I mean, there was a Department of Education study that found that roughly 4.5 million students in K-12 through schools experience unwanted sexual contact from an employee in their school district during their time in school. So this is not a state-specific anomaly. I think as we're discovering with all, with all these other high-profile cases relating to gymnasts or sports or the entertainment industry, um, predators are really cloaked uh, and protected by non-disclosure agreements or resigning before things get real. And, uh, and that's how this is being allowed to happen. And this legislation is just really smart, common sense legislation that closes those loopholes. Well, I want to just step back for a minute. Um, these are teachers who haven't been convicted of any sex crimes. They've just been accused. So some might argue you're convicting them, you're preventing them from having a job in their chosen field when they haven't been convicted of any crime. Yeah, that's generally, um, you know, the one piece of pushback that we get. And I think that the national discourse around the impact and prevalence of sexual violence, um, the prevalence of uh, delayed reporting or the number of survivors that aren't believed. I mean, the trial that we just all watched this week with the Olympic gymnasts and the athletes from Michigan State really just sort of sets the stage for our ability to speak back to that victim blaming narrative. I mean, most of these teachers, there was a really good investigatory article written by one of New Jersey's premier um, news publications called the Star Ledger. And the Star Ledger uncovered that there were numerous instances in which the same teachers had resigned under allegations from district to district. And so when you start piecing those puzzle pieces together, it becomes really obvious that it's not a matter of whether or not students are telling the truth or whether or not these people are convicted. There's a pattern of behavior that's following them and they're smart enough to get out of those situations before they're actually really found responsible. And then they just innocently slide into another school and wreak havoc in other communities. All right, well, uh, much luck with your, your legislation. Thank you, Patricia Teffenhart. Thanks as Thank always. you so much, Carol.